Uh, your next six Caillou challenge is called Find the Missing Letter. Write a method that takes an array of consecutive increasing letters as input and that returns the missing letter in the array. You will always get a valid array and it will always ex it will be always exactly one letter missing. The length of the array will always be at least two. The array will contain letters in only one case. So if they're lower, they'll all be lower. And if they're upper, they'll all be upper. Notice uh, between D and F, there's a missing letter E and therefore the output is E. Here they started at O, they skip P, Q, R, S, and so P is the answer, P was the missing letter. Note that it only jumps um, over one letter. It, it, it's not gonna hop two or more letters ahead. So, have fun coding it. Uh, the case shouldn't matter that much. So, that's pretty clear. I think you should be good. You have everything you need. Go ahead and pause the video. Try this one out. Unpause me when you're ready. Okay, I'm going to go over a simple looping solution. And if you want to stick around after that, I'll do one using link, but I honestly prefer just the simple loop to do this. So, um, what do we have to do? Basically, I'm going to go over the input, but I'm not going to start at the first letter, right? Because the first can't be the missing letter, sort of by definition, right? We've got to start somewhere. There's no previous element to the first one. So I'm just going to skip over it um, because I always, I need to check one letter back. This is my algorithm. I'm going to scan the input array, always looking one back. And I'm going to check that the distance between the two characters is one. If it's not one, uh, it'll be two in this case. Then I want to handle that by returning the letter that was skipped over, which will be one less than the sort of bad character that I encounter. So I can go over the array dot length and plus plus. Good. Uh, here's my scope. So how do we do this? Well, we can, uh, you could think of characters, remember, sort of as integral values. They have a numerical representation. And so I can do something like if array i minus array i minus one. Remember, this is safe because we're starting at one. If that's not equal to one, you know, we have a problem. We're expecting this to be increasing by one every time. And so we can simply return one back from the current letter, which would be array i minus one. And we need this in char form. And so, well, here, let's, let's do this just for fun. And so, um, and then in the other case, remember, we should never get through the for loop. They should always give us valid input, but you'll get some squawking. Watch this. If I try to run this, not all paths return a value or, oh, well, didn't even have a semicolon. So we'll clear that. Uh, into bull. All right, so we got some problems there and we got this not all code, code pass return a value. So just, you can throw an exception here. You could return just some dummy value if you wanted to, but I'd, I don't like that so much, you know. Um, I would just say throw here. And you would put something meaningful here. Remember, don't, don't be like this in production code. You don't want to be cutesy like that. All right, so um, they're still going to squawk at us for probably the array i minus 1, type int to bool. So what we can do is get the integral value of that. Remember, kind of like the ASCII representation, because we're subtracting by a number, right? We had this was a char, this is an integer. And so now I'm saying make this into an integer as well. Then we're comparing apples to apples and the subtraction can take place. Problem with just this though, is that it'll be an integer value and they want a char. 
So we'll convert the whole thing into a char when we're done. So something like this. Cannot impli uh, implicitly convert type into bool on line five. Uh, let's see what I did, int i equals one. Oh, sure. I just put array length. How about i is less than array length? Type or namespace exception missing. We've been working with these enough. You know that we need to bring in the system library for that. And good on you if you were yelling at me the whole time for all these uh, mistakes I made. But anyways, we hit the green there. I'll attempt it. And we're good. So you can submit it like this. Um, and this is what I plan to do. I'll comment this out so we can play in link for people who want to learn something about link. But I would, I mean, this is short. It's pretty clear what it's doing. So I would turn mine in like that. And I will at the end. But why not? Let's play with link, right? Using system link. This is for educational purposes after all. Now, um, there's probably a few ways to go about this. I'm going to use a method that I'm not sure if we've used, skip while. We've certainly encountered it, if not for me, in some of the answers that we scanned through. Um, but basically, you'll see it bypasses elements in a sequence as long as a specified condition is true, and then returns the remaining, the remaining elements. So how can we use skip while? Well, um, I should note one more thing. Notice there's an overload here. We've got two versions, and I want to use this one with this int 32. See how it's not here? You just got the function, the func t source boolean. I got this int 32, which is the elements index, which I want to use in this case. So I'm going to use this overload of the method. We know that they usually provide examples for us. See? So they got their collections called amounts, so they use a nice variable name amount. And then for the index, just put in i or whatever doesn't conflict that you like. I'll probably use index. Uh, but this will basically, uh, we can use this to get to the point where we jumped ahead uh, two letters. So I can say skip while a letter minus, a letter compared against its previous letter has only a difference of one, right? Kind of like what we did with the for loop. Um, but we're just playing with link for fun. So let's do that. Um, array skip while right and our arrays are chars I usually use ch for my variable name for that I'll use index for the elements index it's nice that that overload makes that value um, available to us so I can say skip while and so um, basically you know I could actually do a skip one first because remember down here we started at i equals one we don't want the first element because there's no we can't go index minus one on index zero right that would be an invalid thing so again many ways to do it you could say you know skip one element kind of thing or you can wrap it in your um lambda expression you could say something like uh index equals to zero, right? I'm gonna say true. Remember this is this is a predicate, your lambda here. It's gonna say when to skip. So if index equals zero, I unconditionally skip. And then if index is not equal to zero, that means it's greater than zero, I'll put my other logic. So I could say um, basically like what we did in before loop, we could do something like that so i could say if um, char is our character i'm going to convert it to an integer so we can do the subtraction there and then i could say array index minus one which would be the previous character right and convert that to an int 
and I'll say if it equals to one, right? So um, yeah, automatically skip. That's not the stop. The first index will never be the stopping point, right? And then otherwise you're into the collection past the first index. You're gonna subtract the current element with the previous element, right? And if that difference equals to one, then you're going to skip. If that difference is not equal to one, then that's when the skip while is gonna stop wherever that occurs in the array. That's the index you're gonna stop at. So it's gonna give you a collection, possibly likely a subset of the original array with some number of values from the front cutoff. Could be zero, um, could be um, many. So good. So we have this collection now where um, the first value now is the, the spot where it deviated from incrementing by one. So with that, we can grab the first element. So the link has a handy method for doing that. You can say first to get the first element because we're at the point that we started. And then I can say, minus one to go backwards, right? Because this was the character. This first got us to the character. It would be like, um, let me go back to the instructions. It'd be like the Q, right? Or in this example, um, it would have started at F. And so we want to go one, back one letter. We want to get to E. In this case, we want to go minus one from Q to P, right? So I can do that. Um, let me wrap this whole thing up and convert it back into a char. So you can see why I like the first method, right? This is turning into some alphabet soup here. Um, let me see if, okay, so I missed a, yep, semicolon. But yeah, uh, green again. Green again. So, um, yeah, I just don't like this one as much. It's more complicated. It, it looks and reads more complicated than it needs to be. Yeah, did I cram it all on one line that we had to scroll across the screen to read? Yeah. If you want to, if that's important to you, then you can do something like this. Um, but I'm going to go back and use my other answer. It just looks, it just feels like I'm trying too hard to use link there. It's like, you can do something simple, just do it, you know? So yeah, I like this one. Hit the attempt again. Good. So we got our points over 1100. I'll submit. Um, yeah, and so feel free to, this is clever here, right? So yeah, go ahead and look through the answers, see what else you can use. More enumerable range there, good stuff. Anyways, um, show me what you came up with, hit me up with questions, comments. Otherwise, let's keep rolling. Thanks for watching.